Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at something that was announced at CES 2017. It's the revamped version of the NVIDIA TV or NVIDIA Shield TV as most people know it. And essentially it's a smaller form factor. Uh, we also have Android 7.0 installed on this with the Google Assistant access. We have a revamped controller. Um, it, this is the 16 gigabyte model, not the Pro version. So this is going to be the one that you can pick up first. The Pro one will be available later on in the end of January. But currently if you want to pick up one of these, I'll give you guys a link in the description below. It's available on Amazon for $1.99. This is TK. Let's go ahead and check out the 2017 revamped NVIDIA Shield TV. The main reason I was interested in the Shield TV is that now the form factor is much smaller, at least in the 16 gigabyte model. The Pro version is still the same size as it was last year, um, and I will get a chance to do some hands-on with the device. You'll notice, of course, that the controller did change. We have a new design on the controller. It's not as bulky, it's smaller, it's closer to the aesthetics as far as, let's say, a, an Xbox controller or a PS4. It's more, it's better grippy, and we'll get a chance again to put it on. Um, the other thing, of course, is now that the remote is included in the package. So the, for $199 with the original package, you weren't getting a remote. This was an additional $50. Now you actually get all three pieces, the main unit, there's no stand, the controller as well as the remote control all for $199. And of course this is capable of doing 4K HDR with on Android TV. Real quick as far as the content of the boss, we're, uh, we're going to be getting the shield itself. This is the new compact design, the remote controller, the, the controller really, the remote control here as well as a power brick uh, and specifications. So this is really no big difference in the original version. This is still running the Tegra X1 processor, the really powerful processor. So we didn't lose any horsepower there, uh, but it is smaller as far as the form factor. So again, one of the main benefits of the 16 gig model of 2000 2017, we have it a much smaller size of footprint and I'll show you guys it's almost the size of my phone. Uh, we have 256 core uh, NVIDIA graphics. This is the NVIDIA graphics with the NVIDIA Shield, definitely one of the main benefits here. 64 bit CPU for processing, as for, of course, 3 gigabytes of RAM, 16 gigabytes of internal storage, and you're going to basically say, well, why do they go with 16 gigabytes when they have such high end specs? Well, it's because you have two different options. There is expansion, expansion using USB, and they do recommend this specific one. This is made by SanDisk. This is 128 gigabyte expansion and up to 150 megabytes, and it is expandable via micro USB or USB speeds at 3. So this is going to use the full benefit of the USB 3.0 ports that one of the two at least that are here to give us an expansion of 128 gigs. Last but not least we have Android TV with Google Cast of course, 4K HDR at 1080p or 720p so we have all the three resolutions supported and we'll basically adjust based on your monitor or display. HDMI 2.0b with HDCP 2.2 plus HDR, that's one of the main benefits. 802.11 AC MIMO dual band Wi-Fi at 5 GHz and 2.4, uh, gigabit Ethernet, two USB 3.0 ports, Dolby Digital Plus, Dolby Atmos 7.1, 5.1 pass-through of course, and an HDMI CEC. And here we are. The box is very simple. As we said before, we have pretty much a small set of hardware. The control, the remote control is right there. Uh, let's go ahead and open it up. Um, it's very nice, very sleek. It does not have rechargeable batteries. It does have the new disc batteries and you just need a, kind of like a SIM removal tool to be able to eject it. And it's using the disc style batteries. Putting that on the side, we're greeted directly with the NVIDIA Shield unit itself. Um, no, you notice again, the form factor is extremely small. Um, I just want to give you guys kind of a perspective. This is my uh, Huawei Mate 9. Uh, the Mate 9 is a 5.9 inch, almost 6 inch display. If I put this display directly in here, you can see that it's actually the same length as my phone. It's just a little bit wider. That's how small it is. This is a much, much smaller uh, footprint. Very, very nice. Now, we still have the LED, the green LED option here that you're able to configure as far as dimming it a little bit. The design is exactly what we're expecting. Uh, nothing on the left side, nothing on the right side. Uh, there is no micro SD or an SD card slot here. We do have a vent on the bottom for air uh, circulation. On the back, we have, again, one of the main vents, two USB super speed, which is essentially USB 3.0, HDMI 2.2, and this is a gigabit ethernet. And then this is not a USB type C connector. This is just the proprietary connector for the power brick that's gonna be hopefully at the bottom of this box. But other than that, again, very, very nice, very good. Now, that little dongle that I showed you guys before, we're gonna be using it in one of the ports. Since everything else is wireless other than the wire, uh, the power and the HDMI, I really, I'll still have access to the additional USB 3.0 that I can connect like an external hard drive or an external hub if I wanna use a keyboard and mouse. But again, I'm not losing any functionality by putting in one of those extra USB drives and I'll be able to add that on top of the 16 built-in gigabytes of storage. The controller has been redesigned. We no longer have that big shin piece here that kind of connects the two bottom pieces. Uh, we do have a couple of buttons here, a play and pause 
pause button at the bottom. We have a headphone jack at the bottom here, so you'll be able to enjoy your content using your headphones. Um, we do have a charging port, micro USB, and I assume, yep, here's the micro USB cable with an instruction booklet. Uh, the control feels very nice. It actually, I mean, it, ergonomically, it feels much better in the hand as you're able to kind of curl around it. You're able to hold it correctly. It feels right. It's not that bad. And if you do have the original controller, it will still work with it. Uh, there's no big difference there. We still have the two triggers at the bottom with the two uh, L1 and L4, uh, sorry, the right and left uh, triggers at the top and the buttons and then of course the joystick and then of course the button here to be able to turn it on the nvidia button at the bottom in the middle and of course and i'm assuming this is the microphone as you're going to be able to use this or this controller to be able to initiate the google assistant they both have microphones and they're both going to be functional for that uh, last but not least we have the power brick which is just sitting here in the box let's go ahead and hook it up to the to my 4k monitor behind me and let's see how this boots up at first boot up with this nvidia shield uh, you have two options you can use the controller or you can use the remote control both of them will help you get through the setup um, obviously it will be easier if you have a maximum keyboard but if you press and hold the middle button it'll pair up directly to the unit and then you should be able to access it it'll give it a few seconds you notice right here i'm able to use the controller um, I'm going to go ahead with English um, and it says, do you want to have, do you have an Android phone or tablet? I'm going to say yes. Um, and that makes it a much easier process to be able to set up. Once I was able to go through and set it up directly on the Wi-Fi, I was able to connect to it and set up my account to it using the device. You just go to g.co forward slash Android TV. And then as long as you're on the same Wi-Fi as the actual unit, you'll be fine. And then just say accept uh, third party location. And eh, we're going to say no for now. I don't want to turn on location services. And of course, NVIDIA, this is an NVIDIA uh, Shield box. Join the NVIDIA Shield Team Rewards Program. Um, not right now. We'll set it up at a different time. Here, it's going to give us the information as far as how to download and upgrade. Now, it does say downloading Shield Experience 5.0. This is the update to Android 7.0, which is what we were expecting to have on the box. So keep in mind, when you first open up this box, if you purchase it in early 2017, it's not going to come with Android Experience version, uh, sorry, the Shield Experience version 5. You need to wait for it to update. It's a 1.27 upgrade. And as it's going through here, it's given us some information, navigation, volume up and down, voice control, home, back button on the controller, uh, the remote control itself and then it's going to go through and then uh, give us a little bit of information as far as the game gamepad which volume up and down is centered right here so you can slide swipe up and down uh, back home start and then the nvidia home uh, launching for launch netflix or what is the weather today so you can use it to launch the google assisting by pressing holding the only button or the button the nvidia shield button went ahead and let it boot up for the first time it's booting up actually this is the first time it ever actually did boot up after installing the experience this is going to be the upgrade into android 7.0 uh, you'll notice it automatically shield accessory update please install the update okay remind me uh, let's say update now um, so it's going to be updating the remote control as well from version 1.0 to version 1.0.1 the remote did finally update so i'm now able to use it con uh, configure it correctly uh, we're able to basically uh, just control it just go down straight up uh, out of the box this is what comes with it built in i didn't install anything additional other than just basically booting it up for the first time we have the google play store we have google play Mo uh, movies youtube of course netflix which will support 4k hdr movies off of netflix we have google play music we have amazon built in this is something that's very different Amazon video has never been built in. We've always had to sideload it to a lot of the other Android boxes that I've reviewed for you guys here, but this is built in and it is supported. So this will get uh, normalized updates uh, so that you don't have to worry about, you know, sideloading it and making sure that it's running the latest version. Google Play uh, Games, this is for gameplay. Movies with Voodoo, of course, you'll be able to rent movies. And it has built-in Plex, which is something that is extremely nice. Um, now, you can download Plex normally off the uh, off the Play Store, but this is already built in. And, of course, video, uh, photos and videos, that's something that we don't have other than that. And at the bottom, of course, we have settings. Uh, this is the network that I'm connected to, the accessory, which essentially would be the game controller. And, of course, power. If I press power, it gives us the option to be able to either sleep or restart, which is definitely very nice. And this is an update part of Android 7. Going into the settings tab, we have network configuration display and sound system let's go ahead and display and then let's see uh, so the resolution is recommended to be around well let's go back here it's recommended to be at 1080p at 60 hertz that's what it defaulted to but it does have the ability of going to 4k at 30 hertz now again this is a limitation of the monitor that i'm showing you guys here 4k at 60 hertz is something that it's also capable of doing so let's go ahead and switch over to 4k at 30 hertz and you'll notice right there, HDMI resolution has changed. We're going to go ahead and say OK. It is now set to 4K at uh, 30 hertz. System settings, apps, storage, uh, screensaver, Google Cast. You're able to use this as a Google Cast. So like if you have a Chromecast Ultra or if you have, a, let's say, a Mi Box, uh, a Xiaomi Mi Box, you can actually cast to them. And this is no different. This is an Android TV box. You can cast to it like any other box. 
uh, language keyboard, home screen, of course, you can configure some of those options, moving the tiles around, speech configuration assistance, adding accessories other than the shield accessory. Now, it doesn't consider the remote as an accessory because it's something that's supposed to use it, uh, but you're able to add other controllers, other Bluetooth controllers if you want to use those, um, but it is already paired up with the NVIDIA Shield uh, gamepad, so don't have to worry about that. We can be able to use it. And here it is, system update, if we want to be able to check the update, uh, of course, the name is the Shield. And let's go down. Here it is, Android 7.0. Press and holding multiple time. We have Android N, and it is Android 7.0. Model number is P2897, the 2017 model. Uh, overall, it's pretty simple. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you guys saw the interface, the way the setup is installed. Uh, we do have a couple of things that we do like to have here. A, we do have the ability to play in NVIDIA games. Now, this is basically games that you're able to buy directly off of the GeForce uh, game, pl game platform. You'll be able to play the games directly on the unit itself or you can stream them from your PC. That's one of the main benefits that you have here. So if you have this thing set up on your desktop, you wanna use the horsepower that you have on your desktop on this gaming console, even though the X1 is a very nice one, uh, you're able to do that with these games, or you can purchase them directly and then you'll be able to basically download them and play them. Nitro Nation, it seems like it's a free one. I'll go ahead and just, let's say we'll install that one and see how that performs with the controller. So we'll say install. Again, all of these things are pretty much set up and it's still telling me that it needs a controller. So if we don't have a controller connected, it's not an option. You can still sideload different applications using the side launching uh, option. So we can go directly into the Play Store and we can download ES File Explorer. So let's go ahead here. ES File Explorer. And we're able to download the ES File Explorer. Once we install this, we'll be able to sideload anything using the expansion uh, or the expandable USB port on the side. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install that extra 128 gigabyte thumb drive that we were able to buy to be able to expand the internal storage. I'm going to just connect it directly to the back of the uh the NVIDIA Shield. And you'll notice right there, uh, as well, it'll give you the first option, let's say USB drive connected, send disk USB drive. This is the one I showed you guys in the unboxing. You can either browse it or you can say set up as device storage. And we're gonna go ahead and say set up and then we're gonna say format. It's a clean drive. I haven't done anything to it. It's just straight out of the box. We're gonna configure it to be internal storage. And again, now move data to send disk USB drive or we can move later. We'll just say move later as I'm not really configuring yet. Uh, if we go down to storage, let's go setup, settings, and then we'll go now under storage. You'll notice there's two options, internal shared storage and then SanDisk USB drive. Uh, the SanDisk drive showed up as 114 gigabytes, where we had 11 gigabytes uh, of the internal 16 gigs that was available to us. Now we have the combined power and you're able to move data over to the 114 gigabytes. So you're not limited by the 16 gigs that comes in with it. We're gonna go ahead and play a real quick game. Just wanna... Almost there. And real quick, I just want to do a real quick 4K playback on YouTube. Turning on here, I just want to show you guys we are running at 4K. So 2160p is the resolution that we're looking at. And we're going to go back here. And forward a little bit. Twenty-one sixty running at 4K. Uh, again, my monitor only goes up to 4K at 30 hertz, but it can go further than that, and it'll be able to give you guys the ability to play back the video at that level. Uh, it's amazing, stunning, perfect. Um, I can't really uh, emphasize the, the quality and the playback. The speed of the processing on this is extremely fast. So I went ahead and loaded the, new, the other game here. Uh, it did take me a little bit, so we're going to say L. And then we can finish up playing the game. You can see that the gameplay is extremely smooth, no hiccups, uh, nothing here. It's very, very nice. The initial impressions of this device is extremely well received. Uh, the X1 processor outperforms anything that I've reviewed before as far as an Android streaming box. This is running Android 7.0, which is really the latest version of Android TV that we're able to get on our devices. But not only that, it also has the Google Assistant, which is something that we're not used to seeing on other devices currently on the market. It's actually, it's the first one in 2017. 
Um, I like the form factor. I like, again, the smaller box really makes it easy to fit almost anywhere. It has IR and it also has Bluetooth control as far as the controllers. Um, you're actually able to control your TVs now. So if you want to use an IR, it's definitely going to be working there. Um, the internal storage of 16 gigabytes can be expanded with an external USB drive. As I showed you guys, I just put in 128 gigabytes. It's the one recommended at least when I first, well, when I pre order the actual unit itself. Um, other than that, I like the fact that the controller looks very nice. I also like the really, really nice convenient option of being able to listen to music using the controller. Um, you're able to just plug in your headphones directly into this and you'll be able to be able to obviously use microphone and audio. It does support it and it does actually fit it. And it turns off the audio directly. Well, that's <laughs> You notice I plugged it in and pushed the button and started uh, the assistant right there. Uh, but one thing I want to make sure you guys are aware of, uh, it does need to update when you first turn it on. So if you're turning it on for the first time, please expect about maybe 10 to 15 minutes or so to be able to update it so that you can download the latest version, which is the Experience 5.0, including Android 7 to the box, as well as it does need to update the remote. Um, overall, very, very nice. For $200, it's actually a much better package than it used to be because, again, it includes the controller as well as the remote, where in the past you had to buy the remote at a separate price. If you have the original NVIDIA Shield TV, no worry about it. Uh, the main thing you need to know is um, software-wise, you'll get the update automatically. It's the additional functionalities that you're going to need to buy the additional either controller or the remote to be able to get them uh, for at least to be able to initiate the Google Now uh, or at least the assistant uh, functionality as the new controller has definitely been redesigned, the built-in microphone, the controls, uh, feels very, very nice, rechargeable via, rechargeable via micro USB, a lot of different options. The ability to be able to play NVIDIA games directly on your TV, being, using this as a pass-through option, very, very nice. The ability to be able to play Steam games uh, directly on the TV using this so you don't have to buy an extra Steam box. Again, extremely well, uh, very, very well received. We have gigabit Ethernet, dual band, uh, Wi Fi, 5 gigahertz, and 2.4. Um, and it just, this scream is just stream, uh, screams power, really. It has all the things that you want out of a streaming box. And again, the price point does reflect that for 200 bucks, it's pretty good. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I just want to say, you know, thank you very much for the support. I'm very excited about this. I am going to be doing a much bigger review version of this, uh, testing out the other functions and all the other things that you can do out of it. Um, you can definitely sideload your applications onto this. This is Android TV after all. You can download the ES File Explorer and run it the same way we did it on other Android TVs. Uh, but default, natively, uh, you have Amazon Video built into this, which means we're definitely going to be set to stream anything and everything you want uh, directly on this. And it is capable, obviously, of 4K. Um, and my monitor is capped at 30 hertz, so it can't go higher than that. But again, definitely very, very, very nice. Like and subscribe as usual. I'll see you guys in the next video.